Sup ladies and gents, my name is Enside and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you a few ways to create something that should at least closely resemble the deflection mechanism that Genyo has in the game Overwatch. So to begin, a few examples. First of all, we have the, what I call, inverse deflection method. Which is, simply speaking, the projectile getting inverse and shooting right back from where it came from. Doesn't matter the angle of the shield or deflector, it will always return exactly to the point where it came from. Doesn't matter my position either. Secondly, we have the method which I have dubbed reflected, which simply means that we reflect the traveling vector of the bullet or projectile off of the deflector or shield that we're holding. So it functions as such. Doesn't matter which position either. It's just working beautifully. Last but not least, we have the method which I have dubbed AIMED. Because of a very specific reason, and that is that we the vector that is assigned to, to the projectile is simply the camera's looking vector. And this is a more basic version of it, where we well, simply redirect it from the impact point of the bullet directly. There is one other method I have added onto this last thing that I call adjust bullet position, which I think more closely resembles the way that Genji's deflectability is done. This is still just the same thing, we assign the camera's looking vector to the bullet's traveling vector, but instead of just doing it from the impact point, when the bullet impacts, or well, when the projectile impacts, we reassign the position to the center of the screen, or well, yeah, to the center of the screen, to the center of the camera's looking angle, whatever. And we do the same thing. So yeah. I think this one should most resemble Genji's deflectability. Alright, so now that you've seen what this can do, let's have a look at setup and some code. So the setup is really quite simple, we just have a bullet that can travel. We have a player that can move, we, had, we have a camera that can look around, but the more important thing here... Oh, and also we have a projectile launcher that can actually shoot the bullet. But the main thing, at least for the setup, is what I have chosen to dub a deflector. Or you can just say shield, whatever. Which for this instance... It's just simply a quad I believe I created. Yeah. It's just a simple quad that for testing purposes has had its mesh renderer turned off so that I can actually see through it and not have this in the face all the time. And for the mesh collider on the quad, we have convex applied and is trigger applied. And is trigger is really the more important thing here. I could have just as well gone with a box collider on it and set the box collider to a trigger. That would have worked as well. Also, something I should mention that is a little more important to understand some things that are needed for deflection, at least with this approach. So for the bullet script here you can see that I have a few variables that are a little more important for this instance than some, which is the boolean variable update travel and the boolean variable use velocity. Simply put, as I have it right now, when I start up the editor, the bullet gets assigned a direction of travel and a magnitude of speed with that. 
and nothing else happens to it. Because of that, some extra calculation is needed to make it properly, well, reflect how you would want it to reflect or deflect or, yeah, whatever you want to say. I'm not really sure about the difference of those two words in this instance. But either way, the point is, if you simply do it at start and don't update it, you need to do some extra calculations. But if one chooses to actually update the bullets or projectiles travel direction and or speed, then the method for actually redirecting a bullet, that's the word I was looking for before, redirecting, that becomes way simpler. But with all that said and done, it is time to look at some code. So to begin, we have the two variables we could see before in the inspector, which is the deflection method, which were the three I mentioned before, inverse, reflected, or aimed. And we also have the boolean, adjust bullet position, which as I said before, was the difference between just just doing an aimed redirection or repositioning the bullet and then redirecting the direction. But the more interesting stuff and, well, the main focus of everything happens in the onTriggerEnter method in this case. So first of all, we get the bullet's direction of travel by doing some very simple vector math. And also with that, something that is quite important is that we normalize that direction vector. The second thing we do is to create an inverse vector of that direction, which is, well, extremely simple. We just take the vector we, al we already created before and we multiply it by negative one to inverse it. And here, this is something that I have just chosen to do because I don't want to have to write other dot transform dot position constantly each time when I could just create a reference variable position for it. Next, we enter a switch statement based on the deflection method we have selected. And from this point on is where the more interesting stuff happens. In the case for the deflection method with inverse selected, and here is the start of the things I mentioned before with the importance of updating versus not updating position and velocity for the bullets. Because if the bullet's traveling direction and or speed is updated constantly, then the only thing we would need to do is assign a new rotation to the projectile. And that is simply done via calling the quaternion.lookRotation method and supplying it with our inverse vector that we created before. And that would really be all you would have to do to get to get a projectile to travel well back to where it came from. Once again, that is if the if the bullet's travel direction and or speed is updated constantly. But if you do it another way for the bullets, and only do like I have done here in my bullet script at the start, and set the velocity of the radio body directly to uh, the bullet's forward multiplied by travel speed, thus only setting the velocity once, then this extra step would need to be done. Which here, well, we simply get the bullet component of the projectile and check the is updating travel method. And if it returns false, meaning that the travel direction and speed is not being updated constantly, then we get the rigid body component of the, of the projectile and we go to manipulate the velocity directly and simply multiply it by negative one, meaning that we inverse the velocity. So we apply rotation so that we, well, visually change the direction of the projectile and we manipulate the velocity so that we also inverse the actual travel direction and velocity of the projectile. And once again, this step would only need to be done if the travel direction and speed wasn't updated constantly. In another case, if we were to have selected the reflected deflection method, then we would need to create yet another vector 3, which I have chosen to call reflected for obvious reasons, and we simply call on the reflect method 
from the, the Vector3 class. And as you can see here, reflects a vector of the plane defined via normal. The first parameter would be the indirection, the second parameter would be the in normal. So for the indirection we supply it with the bullet's travel direction that we calculated all the way up here. And secondly, for the in normal, we supply it with the transform.forward in this case. Since for the deflector we are using a quad, and with the way it is oriented, the quad is facing outwards from the player. So, pretty perfect. And for the next step here, once again, if the projectile's direction of travel and speed were to be constantly updated, this is the only thing we would need to do, which is to set the rotation of the projectile to the reflected look rotation. But if the projectile's direction and speed of travel is not constantly updated, then we would need to do this, which is first of all, we store the projectile's speed, you could say, as a float value, which I have dubbed mag, short for magnitude, which is just the quote-unquote size of the vector. We check once again if the projectile is updating its travel direction and speed, and if not, well then we manipulate the velocity directly again by setting it to the reflected vector that we calculated before, and we normalize that vector, and then we multiply that value by the magnitude that we stored before, and hey presto, we have the direction we want, and the length of the vector to travel each tick. Now for the last case here, which would be aimed in this case. Now once again we have to create a new vector, which I have dubbed aim direction. And well, we don't really need to do much calculation for that one. It is simply in this case the forward of the camera's looking vector, which we can access by camera.main.transform.forward. It's not much harder than that. And now once again, if the projectile were to be updating its travel direction and speed, this step would be all we would need to do here, which is simply assign a look rotation based on our aim direction, take that, and assign it, to, and assign it directly to the projectile's rotation. That would be all we would need to do if the projectile was updating its direction and speed of travel. Otherwise, if the projectile is not updating its direction and speed of travel, then we go ahead and get the magnitude of the velocity and store that as a, as a local variable, in this case mag1. We check if the projectile is updating travel, and then if it isn't, then we do pretty much what we did before up here when we used a reflected vector instead. We assign the projectile's velocity equal to the aim direction that we got before multiplied by the magnitude that we stored. And as to why we don't need to do here what we did before with the reflected vector and normalize it, is because we are fetching the camera's, the main camera's forward, which it should already be normalized. Next for the aimed approach, we check if the boolean adjust bullet position is positive or not. And if it is, well, then we do something extremely simple. We simply reassign the position of the projectile equal to the position of the deflector, or, well, the quad in this case. If I wanted to make it even more similar to the way that that Genji's deflection mechanic in Overwatch works, then I should probably assign it to the main camera's position instead of the deflector's position in, it, in this case, but I am pretty satisfied with how it works. And well, this is really <laughs> all there is to it, not gonna lie. It is a pretty fun mechanic that is also very simple once you sort of get the hang of it. And so with all that shown, said and done, let's have a look at a few more examples. We can set update travel and use velocity to true. 
Let's begin with inverse. Which, as is expected, does the exact same thing as it is supposed to. No matter the angle, it will go straight back to where it came from. Reflected will reflect off of the surface no matter how it hits. Gonna be honest, I was not expecting it to do that, but hey, the deflection works at the very least. And the aimed approach. Is working pretty beautifully. Boom. Okay, let's see here. There we go. <laughs> I see you behind me, you little bastard. <laughs> Looks like I've been hit. And have some fun with readjusting the bullet position. How steep can this one become? Let's see here. Okay, that didn't even hit it. That sort of hit it. That That's better. There we go. So with all this said and done, I'm gonna keep playing with the aimed approach, because that is really the one I fancy the most. But with all this said and done, I hope you have enjoyed the video, and I hope it has been useful for whatever your purpose is. Now have a good one, and I will see you later.